If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to perform a brief demonstration on using Wireshark to identify individual clients and their data rates. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, how to narrow down a packet capture to show a specific client, and then we're going to look at the different ways data rates are displayed within the Wireshark trace. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Wireshark. Uh, this isn't a live capture. This is a capture that I performed already and just saved as a PCAP file. So we're just going to go back and kind of review it. Um, I took my phone and, and connected it into the access point that I was capturing from and then was streaming some videos. So I wanted to kind of filter down and just see what that phone was doing so you could uh, look to see if there were issues with that particular device. This, this is kind of how you could filter down this capture that has all kinds of stuff in it and get just the data that you'll want. So we're going to use some filters. Uh, I just want to show you some of the different kinds of filters available. So uh, there is um, some particular filters uh, we're going to take a look at. Uh, WLAN.RA, which is receiver. Uh, so if we wanted to look at a re this received address, uh, my phone ends in 5473. Uh, I've already typed this in here previously, so this filter is still in here. So I'm going to actually set this up. So the, the filter will now display all packets where my phone was the receiver so and we can verify that by just selecting a packet up here and then going down into the authentication flags and we can see receiver address 5473 so um, this is only showing kind of half of the half of the conversation right so if I actually change this uh, you can see that in the four-way handshake uh, I can see message one and message three uh, out of four. Uh, if we change this to the source address SA and enter it and filter it again, it will now uh, change so that what we're displaying is a source address from my phone, right? So we can see now that we see, <coughs> excuse me, we see message 204 and 404. So we see the other half of the conversation. What we actually need to do though, is we need to see everything for this particular client. So I'm actually gonna change this filter to filter just on the client, both directions. Uh, and it's the filter WLAN ADDR. So WLAN ADDR equals, and then the MAC address of the client that I wanna take a look at. So you can see now um, we've got an authentication request, an association request, an association response. We see our four-way four -way handshake, and then we start um, we start transferring data. So um, what I wanted to look at here was um, to determine what data rate my particular device was getting, right? So I connected into this access point. I didn't have any errors or problems. Um, and then I just started streaming videos. So I wanted to see what kind of data rate I was getting. Um, and there's a few examples that I want to show you because it's not always the same data rate. I was moving around as I was playing the video. I actually just walked away from the AP um, as I was playing. So we're going to go down to uh, a packet here, 16 three what was it 16391 that was a good example I think so let's take a look at this packet <clears throat> um, so we can see that uh, we've got some some different things in this packet that we want to take a look at there's a radio tap header and there's 80211 radio information so we're gonna start by looking at their radio tap header and we're gonna see uh, once we open this uh, what we're seeing here is we see VHT information very high throughput information uh, we're also running OF, uh, OFDM. So this tells us kind of where we are from a modulation perspective. So I'm going to expand VHT information and we can see some additional information about the type of connection. Uh, we are running on a 80 megahertz uh, channel. So the bandwidth is, is 80 on this. Uh, if we expand user, it says user MCS8. So we're, we're MCS8. We can confirm that here, 256 QAM, 34 coding. Uh, we see two spatial streams here, uh, and we see the data rate actually just straight up defined right here as 702. Uh, so this is an AC 
connection. So if I expand 802.11 radio information, we see that 802.11 AC VHT uh, is what is specified. So if you wanted to, you could even do a thing where you right click on this data rate and apply it as a column. We could now see data rates specified for uh, some of these packets, but not all of them. So uh, one of the things that I wanted to show you was that the new 802.11ax uh, data rates don't display the same way. So trying to get that information might be a little different and we'll have to kind of rely on uh, looking at an MCS coding chart to be able to get that information. So I'm going to take a look at another packet here uh, that I know has an AX data uh, rate associated with it. So again, same thing. We're, we've got 802. Uh, we've got the radio tap header, and we got the 802.11 radio information. We're going to take a look at the radio tap header again, and we can see now that we show it as HE information. So that is telling me that we are running 8 AX. But um, AX has a lot of different rates. Which which particular rate are we getting within AX? So look, I'm going to expand HE, and there are several HE data fields. Uh, the first one that I want to take a look at is data three to try to get um, my MCS. So my my MCS is um, written in hex here. So 0xB, uh, that is 11. So that is decimal in the decimal translation, that is 11. So we'll have to note that here on the screen and, and then we'll go look at the chart here once we've got all the pieces. So MCS 11, um, if we look under HE5, We'll expand that, and we, we can see that our bandwidth again is 80, so again, a, a 80 megahertz channel width. Uh, we also see our guard in, interval as 0 0.8 microseconds, so we've got the 80 megahertz channel width, we've got 0 0.8 microseconds. Uh, let's go into HE data 6 here and see what else we've got. So then we've got uh, two streams. We can see that we've still got two streams, which makes sense. Uh, this particular phone only has the ability to do two streams. The AP is capable of more, but it's going to do what the uh, what the client can do here. So two streams um, on this guy. And if we go down to the 802.11 radio information again, um, we can see that it is 802.11 AX. We don't get the nice little um, data rate though. So that's what we've got to go calculate. Um, so let's take all this information and go look at a module, uh, module coding scheme. Okay, so here we are with the MCS index pulled up, and you can just see that I got this right from mcsindex.com. Um, this is, I'm only kind of zoomed into part of this chart here. It's, it's rather big, but this is the part that we need. Um, so what we're looking at first here is on this MCS index on the left-hand side. So again, we said we were running HE, and we said our MCS index was 11. So we're gonna go down to um, 11. Uh, but this 11 is for one spatial stream. As you can see to the right, this is for one spatial stream. So we we said that we were running two spatial streams. So coming down here, 11 next to this guy um, at 1024 qualm and a 56 coding uh, is where we need to be. So the next piece of information that we had was that we were we, we were running uh, OFDM 802.11ax and we were running an 80 megahertz channel. So if we slide this over and follow it to 80 megahertz, uh, here we are. And we were running at the 0 0.8 microsecond guard interval. So this is exactly what our data rate was for that frame. Uh, 1201 meg that is not bad for a phone client um, but again this uh, changes based on how you're operating around in the environment uh, and um, we're not able to I mean you can you can filter addi additionally on you, you can throw in some of the guard interval stuff um, into the Wireshark but you're not going to be able to get it to display just the data rate currently like it does for the AC protocols Thank you for taking the time to view this demo. We hope you join us for additional content in the future.